his class. Uh, this is the, actually the last lesson in the geology unit. And we have been talking in geology about, you know, the different um, the layers of the earth uh, from all the way to, from the inner core, the mantle, to the crust. We talk about the different types of rock, the, the, the lithosphere, igneous rocks, and so on. And today, we are going to talk about the very, very top layer here on, on the Earth, okay? And that is the, the, if you, yeah, so some, some people call it dirt. I have been told by my wife that dirt is not a really uh, appropriate term, okay? So we call it soil. All right, so we are going to say that it's soil instead of yeah. <laughs> we could call the ground that doesn't grow anything dirt. Yeah, so uh, technically, as I was looking around, the definition for dirt would be just if you were if you were talking about um, transport uh, soil material. Okay, so and and it's usually uh, talk of a dirt, coal dirt, if it has been transported from one place to the other by wind or by water or even by human uh, transportation. Okay, so if you move dirt, if you move soil, then that would be what is called dirt. Okay, but the 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 general and, and more precise term really is soil. And soil has um, many different components that make it a, a little different than than the rock, of course. Okay. So, but um, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, what is what are the the things that make soil? Where does soil come from, and what is what makes soil that way, okay? So we have been talking a lot about different types of rocks, you know, your igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, and metamorphic rocks, but what actually composes and makes the, the soil? Mm -hmm. Any comments or, or ideas? Um. Parts of the soil are just like really small rocks, but they yeah. they have they've broken down the minerals so much that plants can start using the minerals found in the soil. Mm -hmm. Now really, that is, yeah, that is correct. Soil, Keep going. Really, really good soil also has organic matter in it, so it has. Uh -huh. Dead bugs, dead plants, dead trees, and mm -hmm. it's all soft and squishy. And in that, the reason it's so good is that there's microbes, microbe, little baby, little bacteria. And they eat that stuff and break it down. And when they eat it and break it down, put it back, and they, I guess they poop, then that makes really good fertilizer. So yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. that's why I'm like, then we're going to talk about dirt because there's a lot more dirt in the world than there is soil. <laughs> Deserts than really green pastures. So soil is yeah. Really so that is that is something that I learned. That is uh, all correct. What you have said, uh, Rodney. Thank you for for that. Okay, and that is a really good explanation of what makes uh, soil. So one of the things that I found really interesting is that uh, the kind of the, the beginning process for soil formation is the weathering and erosion of the bedrock. Okay, so Abigail says here, I'm pretty sure it's made out of eroded rocks. And like Ronnie said, decompose organisms mixed with the tiny bits of rocks and also obviously water to make it more than dust. 
Okay. That is very good. Very so. If we are going to look at the whole process of soil formation, you would have that out of the the actual bedrock, the rock, whatever type of rock is it that you are starting with, the process of erosion starts breaking down and making cracks on the rocks. The smaller those uh, rocks become, then they can be basically, depending on the size of the particles, okay, I have here a, a part of the video, okay, that shows the different, the size of the different particles that make a soil. So mostly the inorganic material of soil is composed of these particles. It could be either sand, field, or clay. And see the, the relative size of each one. So if you have kind of like a regular grain of sand of this size, field is a lot smaller, okay? And it's just the same type of rock that is break, broken down in smaller particles, okay? The interesting thing with sand is that sand does not stick together. The grains, the, the particles of sand are still so large that they, they don't uh, stick together unless they are sedimented, you know, with pressure and, and, and so on. But there's a lot of space in loose sand, okay? The field, is, the particles of field are a lot smaller, and they feel, if you wish, like a talc powder, okay? So very, very uh, fine. And clay, the particles of clay, see the, the, the relative size of the particles of clay, very, very small. And these particles now do stick together. And especially with water, they just form a clump, okay? And there's, if you have just pure clay particles, you have almost no space between the particles, okay? And so it becomes kind of like a, 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 a barrier, a layer of a, a barrier, okay? Yeah, so Bromley says it's like the relative size of the sun and the earth, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I think that even the sun and the earth is even more dramatic, the difference. Okay, this wouldn't, if this were the sun, this wouldn't even be the, the, the size of the earth. It would be even... Yeah, maybe more like Jupiter, probably that would be around, this would be probably around Jupiter size. Mm -hmm. So, but you can see how the, the relative size of, of these things. Now, so we, as we have this process, okay, of soil formation, you have that the bedrock then is it, uh, being eroded and broken down, and then it's broken down into these three types of particles, sand, silt, or clay, depending on the size, okay? And um, like Rodney was saying, and uh, Abigail was, sa were, was were saying also, you have that then you have organic um, plants, especially, that start living and growing in between these particles, okay? And within the, the structure there of those particles, you have a lot of empty space, all right? And the empty space is a good habitat for microorganisms, bacteria and fungi and so on. And these microorganisms actually, as they live and die and, and, and do their organic functions, they keep decomposing the organic material, and the result is that they build a kind of, if you wish, a, a glue around the particles, the inorganic particles that keep them a, a structurally together, okay? So the result of all this is that you start with just the bedrock, but then you end up with a mix 
of the particles of sun, clay, and, and field, the, the rest of the organic material being mixed and decomposed, and this biological uh, glue that keeps all the structures together. And so, um, let me see, okay, for, oh, I have here some pictures of, of sand, okay, so you can see here the grains of sand, pretty, pretty yeah. large, yeah. really, okay. Nothing. And actually, would... yeah, go ahead. Very few things would grow out of that type of... That's right, yeah, and why? Why, why not very many things can grow directly in sand? I'm guessing they can't hold waters, water very well, and they just don't have minerals or organic matter. They're too big, and so the water will come over, and if you watered it, it'll just flush out all the organic matter while the sand sinks deeper. That's right. So the sand doesn't hold water very well. The, the pores between the sand grains, okay, are too big, and so the water just runs through and runs down. Gravity just pulls the water down, okay? And so it doesn't leave enough water content in order for things to grow. So if you have just a very sandy soil, you know, uh, it will be uh, hard to, to grow things, okay? Now, it is interesting that you can, um, through watering and growing things, you can convert sandy soil into better soil, okay? So that is kind of the, the, the interesting thing. Now, this is, would be kind of the loam soil. Loam is a soil that has about 40% of sand, 40% field, and about 20% of clay. Okay. It I looks mean, like this picture. Go ahead. It looks like pretty good soil, like almost like. Yes. Soil. Yeah. This is this loam would be kind of the ideal soil for growing things. So that distribution of the particles, 40, 40, 20, is kind of the definition of a loam soil. In this picture, you can also see a lot of organic uh, material. Okay, that becomes part of the soil. Okay, so then let's see here we have a clay soil. Very wet, so the water does not, it absorbs the water and does not release the water, doesn't conduce the water at all, but it's also very hard for things to grow in purely clay soil, okay. So one of the problems that uh, sometimes we have in, you know, in, in, in managing soils is that uh, if you have a loam soil but you disturb it a lot, you till it, you know, you break down that biological glue that I was talking about, and then uh, if you step on it or, you know, things are laid on top, it can uh, reduce the size of the pores and transform the soil into more of a clay soil, okay, and become less... Uh, 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 what is the word I'm looking for? Oh. Useful? Uh, less useful, yes, thank you. <laughs> less useful, less fertile. Fertile was the word. Okay, yes, excellent. All right. So, um, in the lesson, I put a link here to the article on soil. This is a pretty large article, and I don't want you to, to, I don't necessarily am asking you to read the whole thing, but there are several parts of the article that I found really, really interesting, okay? Um, by the way, I also have in the lesson a link to this video. 
that is called soil stories. It's really a very interesting, really interesting video. Okay, and uh, I, I I want you to to look, uh, you know, look it up and everything. It's just half hour. It's not very large. It's uh, pretty well done. Okay, I would say there are some corny things and so on, but I, I think that you will you will enjoy it, especially seeing how the soil scientists are able to survey the soil and analyze and classify the soil, okay? So, yeah, uh, Rodney says, read the whole thing for soil is how we get food. It is kind of important. It is actually very, very important, really. So, um, one of the things that in the uh, article it mentions, and the video also goes through that, is about the different horizons of soil. So here we have a picture where you can see the different horizons. So the top layer actually is not labeled here, but the layer where there is organic uh, material, just organic material, that is called the O layer, okay? The letter O, all right, for organic. The A layer, is the layer of soil where you have a mix between the inorganic sand, silt, and clay and organic material. This also is what is called the topsoil, all right? This is the area of the soil where plants grow and you have the most activity, biological activity. Okay, so almost all the biological activity occurs here in this layer of topsoil. Is that about six inches deep? That's the topsoil? It actually depends. It totally depends on the, the area. Okay, so uh, there are many areas, uh, for example, here in Utah, where we don't have any topsoil. Okay. So um, the, 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 it goes directly. There's no organic layer, and there's almost no A layer. I heard that on average here in Utah, the topsoil is about a quarter of an inch. Okay. So that is that is something that you know we need to be very very careful on how we manage the topsoil because it can be very easily destroyed and then very hard to recover all right so there are some areas for example in in argentina i grew up in the areas of the west Pampa, that is kind of the central part of of argentina very, very fertile area, and the weather is such that it basically rains, you know, uh, it rains more in the summer, but it also rains in the winter, so it rains year-round and, and kind of temperate weather, and there are three feet of topsoil there, okay? So very, very different. So the A horizon is three feet deep, so about a meter deep, you know, so all, all this much of, of topsoil. So it really varies how how deep this horizon is, but this is the, probably the most important part of the soil. The D layer is the area where there's almost, there's very little biological activity, all right, less, uh, less, um, or, uh, organic material, and you have here your area where you have mostly, you know, sand, clay, and seal together. The sea layer is what is called the regolith. Okay, let me type that down in the. Okay, regolith. I typed it there in the chat. Okay. And rego is uh, from uh, one of the Greek word means uh, meaning um, moved, okay, or 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 displaced, okay. And what is lift? Lithos. 
we've already talked about this several times in the class. What was lit? The, the, the ending lit comes from any ideas you remember? Wait, wait, what? What are you talking about? A or B or C? C. The C layer, the C layer is what is called the regolith. Okay. And what is the so the it, it, it has two words, okay, rego, okay, and lit. All yeah. right. And so what was you remember me saying what was the meaning of lit or lithos, okay? Lithos would be the word in Greek. We Greek. talk about um, yeah. Um, was this last uh, last Wednesday? Well, we we I, I think that I mentioned in, in several of the classes when we were talking about lithosphere, uh, lithography. Let's see what other words. Uh, we, we said several, there were several words on with lit. Okay. <laughs> this is um, probably um, not inhabitable zone or something doesn't quite uh -huh. go. Or you can't. Yeah, it, so it actually means rock. Okay. Oh. So lit is rock in Greek. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the regolith is the display, so the broken down rock. Okay, and so the, the and then the lower layer here will be the B horizon, that is the the bedrock. Okay, so the bedrock is just the original parent rock, not weathered and not broken down. Okay, so you and so the, you can see that. As the, the bedrock gets eroded, it gets transformed into regolith, okay? Then as more organic material gets built up on top of that, it becomes the B horizon. And then as there's more uh, organic and biological processes, it creates the A horizon of the soil. So that so, makes sense. It's the soil, the, the ground, is built from the bottom up, not from the top down. That's, that's usually correct. That's right. So if, if you leave it, uh, the only way that soil is built from the top down is with, um, with transported and displaced uh, soil. What about mountains? What about mountains or, you know, yeah, mountains, they have rivers going up and down, eroding it, rainfall, so mountains, right. yeah. mm -hmm. landslides, rock slides. That is correct. So there, there you have, you know, so in the case there of mountains, you have a, the, 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 the example of that. As the rock, as the bedrock, weathers away, it either stays there in place, okay, if, if the topography of the landscape is flat, okay, the bedrock breaks down and it weathers away and then it starts building soil on top. What but breaks if the, if the, the topography is on an incline and the rock weathers away with rain and wind and everything is going to slow down. Okay. My question, I I'm, I'm I'm want to keep asking, but how does the bedrock erode if it's covered by C, B, and A? That is a good question. So the bedrock, does, the process of erosion of the bedrock slows way down one, once you have the, the soil on top. Okay. It still happens because large trees and sometimes sometimes uh, some of the plants 
have uh, roots that are powerful enough that they can even penetrate the top part of the bedrock and break down the bedrock. Okay. Have you seen sometimes trees growing? You know, they are on the on the mountain, and you can see that the tree, the roots of the tree, are actually going into the rock. Okay. Yeah. So some trees can actually also uh, do this process of creating regoliths and and uh, and breaking down the bedrock. But that is that is the process really of uh, plant erosion. Okay. Uh, but of course, you, at, the, at that point, you don't have the other processes of wind and and, and so on. Sometimes water can still be a fracturing rock even under in, under soil. Okay. So with bedrock, um, how deep do you think it usually is? It's like if you're in Utah, the top soil is half an inch, and depending on where you are, you like hit rocks. But the bedrock is really what keeps the water from keep going, from continue soaking down. So as you water your garden or something, it stops at a certain level, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how so, does the water or wells get that deep if they hit bedrock? Okay, so my understanding is that the the that is what is called the water table. Okay, so the there is a, a a level. I was actually studying that because I had I had pretty much the same question as you did. Okay, let me see. So it's going here. Let me go here. Um, okay, to the aquifer article. I was reading about this last night. Okay. Um, here we have kind of a diagram of an aquifer. All right. And so we have that there is a layer. Okay. At, at, any, at some point, there's going to be a layer where the, there's no soil and the, the water basically hits the bedrock, okay? And here in this diagram is this kind of brown grayish color, very low hydraulic conductivity bedrock, okay? So basically meaning water cannot pass below here, all right? There are times when there are even cracks in the bedrock that allow water to seep further down. But the aquifers, you see this one here below, is a confined aquifer, all right, uh, because it is between an impermeable layer, a layer of clay soil, and then the bedrock, okay? Here in this diagram, even though the diagram shows this, this part of the aquifer to be kind of blue, this is not flowing water, okay? This is not water like, you know, like you see in the rivers. It's not that the soil is floating on top of the water. So it would be it water moves. mixed with, with rock and soil and sand and everything. It's all mixed together. The water is still in between the pores of the soil. So it only the water only circulates when it rains or the earth shifts. So it really just sits there. That's right. So the water surfaces if there is a stream, okay. Or if you dig a well, if you dig a well, then the water is going to kind of be filling, coming out of the soil, of the aquifer, really, and filling in. The article here in uh, Wikipedia explains this very well and, and kind of to give you an idea of, the, of how an aquifer uh, works. So it says, the beach provides a model to heal, 
to help visualize an aquifer. If a hole is dug into the sand, so remember, if you have ever been at the beach, you know, and there are sand, and you start building a sand castle, okay, I have done it thousands of times, I'm sure that you have done this too. You start digging a hole, what happens? Okay, so if the hole is dug into the sand, very wet or saturated sand will be located at a shallow depth, okay? This hole is a crude well, all right? So have you had the experience that you, you start digging the hole in the sand, okay, and then at some point, water starts filling in the hole? Yeah, I have. Okay. Depending right. on where you are, how deep or how far away you were from the shoreline of a lake or mm -hmm. the ocean, it will fill up. One it will time, fill up. Yeah. Family, we dug like a, cousins and family, we dug like a five foot deep hole. And when yeah. we finally hit water, whoosh, filled up, and then we had like this little sand hole. It was really fun. That's right. And so where is the water coming from? Where was the water? Before you dug the hole, where was the water? It was uh, kind of, it was in the lake, and so the lake or the sea was soaking into the sand. And as you remove the... It removed, was soaking into the sand, yeah. Yeah. It was, so, it was already in the sand. The water is not that it came from the lake or from the ocean into the hole. Okay. The sun already is such yeah, a Yeah, just it, it was our, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So can you that is kind of how it works and so the wet sun the wet sun represents an aquifer. Okay, so when we see the graph here of the of the aquifer, the blue is not the meaning that this is just water. It means that it's saturated sand, whether that it was a sand that is completely sand or, or soil that is completely saturated with the water. And so when you dig a well, okay, when you dig down, then you will get to a layer where the, the, the water is going to be poured into the hole Okay, and then it's going to fill the well. And then the article here is that the level to which the water rises in this hole represents the water table. The water table is the level at which saturated water exists. Okay, so in this graph here, this line is the water table. Okay, and you have here, for example, the stream. Why, why does the stream maintain that level of water instead of the water coming higher up? Well, it's because it reaches the level of the water table itself. Okay, so the aquifer is confined within the area by the bedrock, okay, and then there are several different layers of soil that could make the movement of the water more or less. Okay. So that is, that is, uh, I, I thought that that was actually there, I, and this for me it was really interesting. I didn't know that, that, uh, that part, how aqu aquifers work. I thought that they were kind of like, underground rivers of water. No, no, no. It's not that they are underground rivers of water. It's that it's, it's soil that have water, that are saturated in water. Okay. And so you can dig a well and the, the hole will fill up with that water. All right. As it drains and, 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 and drains, resaturate. Re the aquifer, you replenish the aquifer, okay? But there could be cases where you, you could take more water than it's replenished, and then you can drain the aquifer. Isabel? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, 
does the water table move, like lower or higher, or is it a constant, pretty constant? The water table, my understanding here is that the water table could um, get lower if, um, if you extract more water than it's been being replenished. Okay. Can it get higher? Can it get higher? Can the water table raise? Or does that water just yes. pop in the stream and then it stays the same? No, it could it could get higher, okay, depending on how, you know, sometimes you have very wet uh, seasons, very wet winters, okay, and that could actually raise the water table. So, for example, here in uh, Lehigh, all right, so I live in Saratoga Springs. We are very close to uh, Utah Lake, okay, which is, basically an area, an open area of an aquifer, all right, and the, the, the water table is the, the height, basically, of a Utah Lake. Now, some years Utah Lake is higher and other years it's lower. Well, the, the water table also goes higher and lower that way. And so you have that, for example, the town of Lehigh, there are some areas right by the Jordan River where sometimes you have fields that are completely soaked, okay? They are just inundated, all right? And that is because the water table has risen during the, the, the spring, usually you see that. Then during the summer, as the water flows through the Jordan River and everything, the water table gets lower. But uh, there in Lehigh, for example, there are many areas where people cannot build basements in the homes because the water table is very is too high. In Saratoga Springs, you know, I live just probably about, oh, you know, three, you know, what, 100 yards from the lake, but because there's a, you know, a, a rise there between the lake and where I live, we can have a basement because the water table is much lower, okay? The water table is at the level of the lake, and there's about 25 feet of, 25, 30 feet of difference already that way, okay? Does that make sense? I, I hope okay. this is helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. It is helpful. I'm understanding. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Annika says, if the topsoil levels change, the water table would be changing too. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the topsoil, they can change for several reasons, okay? But uh, one of the reasons could be by disturbing the topsoil the topsoil can become arid, okay? So for example, now uh, um, in, the, in the early 1900s, there was a lot of uh, people that um, did agriculture in the prairies and everything, and, and they, they did a lot of uh, plowing of the soil. That was considered to be the best way to loosen the soil and prepare the soil for a crop. Well, the, the plowing every year of the soil kept breaking down the soil structure and not letting enough water remain in the topsoil. Okay, and so during the 1920s, especially here in America, this happened quite a bit, that, um, uh, let's see, what am I searching for? Mm. Okay, so the dust bowl. So the dust bowl was a phenomenon that happened here in, in the US, okay? And it happened because during the 1920s, uh, people started plowing the prairies uh, in Kansas and Oklahoma 
and so on. And then in the 30s, there was uh, there were several years of drought, okay. And because the soil had been plowed and had been uh, disturbed, then during the, the, the years of drought, there was not enough water to keep the soil down, and it became dust, okay? And there were dust storms that reached all the way to Boston, okay? So really an, an amazing phenomena that happened by poor soil management. So what I was looking at nowadays is that um, they recommend that people don't till the soil so much, okay? That you don't disturb the soil, all right, in order to keep it, uh, to keep it more, the, the, the structure of the soil more intact and, be, and build on top instead of, of that. So this was a very, very interesting thing that happened here in, in, the, in the U.S., okay? So kind of poor soil management. Mm -hmm. Okay, it has happened in other areas also, but this was one that, that was kind of very interesting. Mm -hmm. Here we have another picture where you see also the four horizons. So here is O, the organic horizon. Which one is this one? A. Mm -hmm. or a. That's right. The soil. Okay. The soil, the top soil. Okay. Yeah. Max says, guys, I live there. Yeah. You, you live there in the area of Texas where the, the dust bowl occur. Okay. And so it is very important, really, to, to take care of the soil. Okay. So, which, this reddish one, kind of orange, that would be the B horizon, okay? And what is the, the, the orange color? What does the orange color denote? Okay. Why, why would this layer, the um, horizon, be reddish? Is it, I don't think it would be iron, would it? It's but iron. It yeah. would be iron? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's iron. And it is actually, you know, iron oxide, okay? So the reddish part indicates that it's not only that there's iron, but also that there is still enough force, enough uh, cavities between the particles for oxygen to come through and oxidize the iron, okay? Which is this layer here. Which layer is this one? This sea hemisphere. It's not rock solid. It's kind of a mixture. So it's That's top. right. Yeah. So that is the sea layer. Okay. The sea layer, the regolith. Okay. And why? Why is it gray? Why is it not uh, reddish now? It's right on top. What's the difference? Hmm. Um, hmm. Would it be would it be because there's iron here and no iron down here? It, unless iron was lighter, I suppose, than the rocks underneath it. Mm -hmm. That would be one theory. Okay. So I, I propose, I, I, I suggest that there's probably still iron in this area, the same as it's here. Right. So what is not here? Oxygen. It's more compact. It looks kind of like clay. In that That's it... right, yeah. Okay, that is right. All right. So that is, that is the difference. So in this area, you have that the oxygen still gets through through the particles to oxidize the iron, and in the sea layer, okay, in the sea layer, there's no more 
room for the oxygen and so it doesn't oxidize as well. Okay. So that is kind of the, the, the difference. I, I think that that is pretty cool. Very, very interesting. Okay. Oh, well, I don't want to. That is. It's like, it's like where the earth breathes, or where, where the earth breathes. Yeah. Yeah, that's how the earth breathes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you see that. And then why is the topsoil, you know, why is the topsoil now uh, darker? What would be the 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 things uh, that give it a dark color to the topsoil? Kind of the microbes, the living organic matter, because yeah. everything mm -hmm. kind of turns brown. Dead, you know, plants, food, meat. Uh -huh. so. And organic, organic matter. Okay. Whenever we talk about organic matter, what what mineral are we talking about? What mineral is it that makes all living things? Carbon, carbon, carbon. Yeah. Carbon, carbon, carbon. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, who said that one in the echo chamber? <laughs> Me. Okay. All right. Yeah. And you know that carbon, when it's decomposed and everything, is black. All right. And so that is that is why you see that the more the darker it is, okay, the more organic material there is in the soil. Okay. So I find it fascinating, really, that you can actually start telling as you look around the different minerals that are there by even looking at the uh, at the colors okay the third layer looks like sand and bugs okay this one here the, the, the this would be the b layer all right so i think that we still see some roots okay some cavities and that is what brings the oxygen in okay um, I don't know exactly the composition of this soil, how much sand, silt, and clay there is in between these, these particles, okay? But that is really a good observation, all right? Yeah, but let me see. Yeah, go ahead. If you look where the um, B layer is, where the uh -huh. iron, where it looks like you can see roots of all the plants, and then it kind of stops. So that's right. Mm -hmm. We we know photosynthesis. Oh, sorry, I said it wrong. Photosynthesis. The, oh my gosh, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. They breathe in the air. So do the roots, since the air is able to go all the way down there, the roots are able to breathe all the way down there. But past that point, they stop breathing, huh? Or is that well, theory? Yeah. So so the the process of breathing, okay, by plants. It's accomplished actually in the in the upper layer. The process of um, yes, photosynthesis. Okay, so the process of the roots, the 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 function of the roots is not so much of breathing, but of absorption of water and minerals. Okay. So the roots, the function of the roots is to, to basically act as absorbers of water and the dissolved minerals that are in the water. And then they transport that up to, to the top of the plant. The photosynthesis process happens in the green parts of the plant, okay? And then the breathing happens also in, in, in the, the parts of the plant that are exposed to air, okay? Of course, that the roots also take up some oxygen because uh, in, the, in between the molecules of water, there is also oxygen. So let me see if I can show you, okay. This is another interesting thing that I wanted to, to show you in this video. Pa, 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 pa. I think that it's in this one. Uh, okay. 
Yes, and graph. Oh, here, yeah. Okay, let's see if it goes to that. Okay, come on. Okay, so let me see. Yeah. Uh, okay, so oh, not, not this one. There was another graph that showed that soil was composed of 50%. Okay, let's see if I see it somewhere, but I'm not sure I will find it. No, it, soil was composed 50% of soil was inorganic material. Okay, like sand, clay, and seal. All right. And then a, a, a little bit, a sliver of the, the pie was the organic material, meaning all the living things and roots and plants and everything. And then almost the other whole 50% was empty space. Okay, so very healthy soil, okay, Topsoil has about 50% of that is filled with water and air, water and gases. Okay, the gases can come from the top or can be also uh, made by by biological processes. Okay, so really interesting that the 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 topsoil has also to have a lot of uh, cavity, okay, so gases, plants, uh, <laughs> exert gases, not the plants, but the bacteria, yeah, the bacteria, they produce uh, carbon dioxide and, and a lot of, of gases, so yes, and that it actually enriches the soil, and that is actually a very necessary part of the soil, okay. So in here we see there's kind of another graph in this video somewhere. Where was it? That show. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, yeah, you you see it when when uh, okay this one here okay you see that there is a lot of room in between the the particles of inorganic matter okay for water and air to go through. And all that is absolutely necessary. And a good soil, a good loam soil, has about 50% is empty space in order to absorb water and, and air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK. Oh, well, so we we'll spend a lot of time talking here about the soils and the different characteristics and everything. I, I have more material than I have time, of course, like always. This is an interesting diagram that shows the composition of soils depending on the percentage of clay, silt, and sand. And here you see in this part of the triangle is where you have the loam soil, but that is the best ideal soil. Soils can be classified in many different ways, okay? And in here, they are said in, in, in the article, kind of towards the bottom of the article. Let me see. Yes. Towards the bottom of the article, there's a, a good list of different types of soil. So I'm going all the way kind of down. Yeah. Okay, so. It talks about in the US, okay, the soil taxonomy and orders, and it has a list of different soils. There's probably more, and then pictures, okay, of the different soil types that can be encountered around here. And you see that each soil has what is called a soil profile, okay? The profile is the, the type of mixture and colors are, that it has, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah, 
Plants, all, all living things, have the same processes as everything else. Okay. So, all right. Now, how do we apply this lesson, what we have been learning, to a gospel principle? There's one application that is actually really um, common and obvious. Okay. Elder Oaks gave a talk in uh, this last conference on the parable of the sower. All right. This is probably one of the most beautiful and actually more easy to understand parables that the Savior has given. Okay. And most of many people say that instead of being called the parable of the sower, it should be called the parable of the four types of soil. <laughs> okay. Because the, the interesting thing is of course not not you know, of course that it is important what the sower does and the seed itself. But that is the constant part of the parable. What is the thing that changes in the parable? The soil, the soil changes in each situation, That's not right. the seed. The, seed. Yeah. the soil changes, okay. The seed is exactly the same, and the effects really of the seed are dependent on the type of soil, okay. So uh, I put also here a link to this, to this talk, and I invite you to listen again to this talk, the, 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 the parable of the sower, and think about uh, um, what, what, a, what type of soil am I, okay? And I have to tell you, you know, as I grow older, I can see, I can look back, okay, and see that at different times in my life, I have really been, if you wish, different types of soil. Okay, and we can change. We can change for the better or for the worse, depending on, on the things we do. Almost finished. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is what is my invitation for you, okay, to study this and, and analyze what type of soil am I, okay. So we are going to finish with a prayer. I need to relinquish the room. So I'm going to offer the prayer if you don't mind, okay? That's Thank fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful, Father, for this beautiful day and the things that we have been able to learn about the soil and this, this uh, amazing processes that thou has created and given us to sustain life upon the earth. And we can see thy hand in all things even thy sense of humor in, in creating things that, that produce the, the minerals and the materials and the things that we need for food and for raiment, for building. And help us, Father, that we may apply these teachings into our lives and how to become better and more fertile soils for thy word. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So, okay. Thank you very, very much. Thank All you. Right, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wasn't there yesterday. I was 